California supervolcano as dangerous as Yellowstone, if not an even greater threat. We're talking about, we were recently having quake swarms, thousands of them almost every day. This is by Sebastian Ketley on Express UK, also on other articles, including San Francisco Chronicle and what we know from US Geological Survey. The giant supervolcano hidden beneath California could be an equal, if not greater, threat to the U.S. than Yellowstone. This is what scientists have revealed lately. This is uh, basically information before the Ridgecrest earthquakes. We know that something has been taking place on an area, on a fault, that has not been disclosed yet by the geologists. Maybe they feel that People are not interested in the fault lines crisscrossing California. I have no idea. But as you can see here on the right of the diagram, Walker Lane Crust. And here you can see again, for going from northwest to southeast is the Walker Lane Fault, which passes, of course, through all of California, even through the Long Valley Caldera. You can see that ridge in the Sierra Nevada mountains. That is uh, the area of the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. Various cinder cones, volcanic cones, as you can see here, this is it, one of the areas full of uh, volcanic craters. And this is the area now. On the south, we have Ridgecrest. On the mountain range there, you have the Walker Lane Fault System heading northwest. That's exactly in the middle of the map you see Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano. Clear Lake Volcano is at the upper left-hand side of the image. This is Google Earth, of course. Clear Lake is also part of the Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano system. Now the radius from the pin that we had from Long Valley to Clear Lake was about 200 something miles. And that radius was farther, a bigger radius than from, clear, from Long Valley to Ridgecrest. Um, Ridgecrest, as we know, sits at the eastern end of the Garlic Fault. We recently learned about the Garlic Fault, which is locked into the San Andreas Fault around the area of Los Angeles. It's zipped in, locked like a zipper, the teeth of a zipper, closed to uh, the west with San Andreas and to the east, it's also closed with the Walker Lane Fault System, as we said, that the geologists are not referring to. And one thing I have on my to-do list today is to send a letter to U.S. Geological Survey to ask them, ask them why is it that they have not referred to the Walker Lane Fault System. Here we are again, those pins that you see there. This has to do with, of course, the Vancouver earthquake that we had July 3rd, the day before the July 4th 6.4 Ridgecrest quake. They had a 6.2 magnitude north of Vancouver Island, Canada. 13 hours later, the Ridgecrest quake hit in Southern California. But this is not the first time it happened. It also happened in 2015, when again they had a 6.2 magnitude earthquake north of Vancouver Island, Canada. And 24 hours later, they had a Ridgecrest earthquake. So something very strange is happening with the North Vancouver Island quakes hitting at Ridgecrest. How is that possible? And you'll see that the uh, map coming up again, it's because the Walker Lane fault system is locked and loaded, and it's locked to the San Andreas on the west coast, the Garlic Fault perpendicular to that, and at Ridgecrest here, locked in again like a huge oval and heading up, it heads up northwest to the Cascadia Arc at the Juan de Fuca plate to the sea, Cascadia Arc, and it's uh, pushing northward on the Cascadia Arc, pushing. It's as if you have somebody nudging you uh, and you don't move. That's the way it's going. That's why the pressure from Vancouver Island on the San Andreas Fault there hits all the way down to Ridgecrest. Of course, in the area passing through the Long Valley Caldera system. And it's a huge system. It's a supervolcano. So, uh, 
it's this like a sleeping giant. You know, we've had um, various, we, we usually concentrate on Yellowstone. We don't concentrate enough on what's happening at Long Valley Caldera. Maybe we should have a, an observatory in, the, in Long Valley Caldera, just like we have in Yellowstone. But we do have a California volcano observatory. So anyway, the 20 mile long valley caldera in Eastern California, one of the world's largest volcanic calderas, a super volcano measuring 10 miles in width. It's up to 3000 feet deep. Very few people know about the super volcano east of the Sierra Nevada range on the Walker Lane fault system making it a potentially greater threat than Yellowstone supervolcano is. A study published last August in the science journal Geoscience World has found evidence of ground deformation there. There you go. Geologists who led the study found ongoing uplift, suggesting that new magma may have intruded into the reservoir since at least 1978. Okay, now you have to get onto your Google Earth and see how close that is to Ridgecrest. It's only about, let me measure it again on my map. I forgot. It's about 150 miles from the center of Long Valley Caldera to Ridgecrest, 150 miles. Um, now, all that whole area from Long Valley to Ridgecrest is, is a volcanic, various volcanic fields. It's all volcanic fields. Even Ridgecrest is in the Coso volcanic field when they came, when the USGS came out with their high threat volcanoes, and uh, especially three of them in uh, California, they classified the coastal volcanic field where Ridgecrest is as being moder a moderate threat. Well, now we know that it has uh, deformation, it's uplifting, especially since the uh, Ridgecrest earthquakes of July 4th and 5th, and the 80,000 aftershocks that are still going on there, 80,000. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I'm not a geologist, but I don't even know if that has ever happened before in the world. Something very strange is going on there, especially with the earthquake hiatus that we've had uh, these past decades on the San Andreas that has the geologists worried what's going on there, they're saying. They, they, we should have had a number of at least six or seven, uh, seven magnitude earthquakes by now. So that's not been the, instead we have the 7.1 that happened on July 5th in Ridgecrest. How strange. And by the way, expect that to give uh, an earthquake swarm in Yellowstone, just like what happened in 1999. They had a 7.1 magnitude in uh, Ridgecrest and it gave Yellowstone supervolcano um, super uh, an earthquake swarm a couple of weeks later. So here we are, Long Valley Caldera. Between that and Ridgecrest, we have, for example, a number of volcanic fields. We have the Coso, we have the Inno, Mono, Mono and uh, of course, it's the supervolcano. And magma has been growing there since uh, 1978. It's been uplifting, meaning that it's filling up. The uplift could be evidence, they say, of moving molten rock or the crystallization of material deep beneath the ground. And the study says, quote, despite 40 years of diverse investigations, the presence of large volumes of melt in Long Valley's magma reservoir remains unresolved, end quote. No kidding. What do you mean it remains unresolved? <laughs> it's growing. It's resolved. It's growing means something's going on under there. Now, the scientists estimate the Long Valley Caldera Reservoir contains quote, considerable qualities of melt, likely greater, are you ready for this? Sit down, please. 240 cubic miles, that's 1,000 cubic kilometers of melt. About 20% of this melt could be hot enough to be scorching liquid rock. And according to the United States Geological Survey, Long Valley last erupted about 100,000 years ago. Today, Long Valley Caldera is thermally active with a number of hot springs and fumaroles doting its landscape, and it looks a lot like Yellowstone. It's got prismatics, it's got geysers, it's got a beautiful, uh, air, beautiful area. It's just like Yellowstone, basically. Uh, but the comparisons to Yellowstone volcano do not stop because Long Valley could potentially be 
as devastating if it were to erupt. Yellowstone's last caldera forming eruption tore through the U.S. about 600, we're talking about a super eruption, 640,000 years ago. The terrifying blast formed the current 35 mile by 50 mile Yellowstone supervolcano caldera, but there's no way for USGS scientists to predict whether such an eruption will occur again in the future. But for now, the odds of Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano of California erupting appear to be less than 1% per year, whatever that means. You know, they have no way of knowing how a magma chamber will react depending on what's going on around it or around the world or planetary alignments or pole shifts or, you know, take your pick. Um, or mantle plumes. Now, the USGS, by the way, we have the images here show what's going on underneath, but they don't know if there's a mantle plume. They have a question mark there. It's like the earth mantle, something coming up like a blob uh, underneath the Long Valley Caldera magma paint chamber, but they don't know because they, they haven't connected it yet. Maybe there is a mantle plume, just like there is under Yellowstone. We have no idea. And they have no idea either. But um, I guess they'll, they'll be looking into that soon enough. I don't know. Now, USGS said increased volcanic unrest includes earthquake swarms. B by the way, this was written before the um, Ridgecrest quakes, okay, this, uh, earlier this month. So they're talking about ground deformation, which we have, earthquake swarms, which we have in the thousands every day, all right? CO2 gas emissions, we have that as well. Uh, emissions in the Long Valley uh, since 1980s increased. Increase the chances of eruption occurring in the near future, but scientists still lack adequate data to reliably calculate by how much. Okay, so volcano, volcanic unrest in some other large volcanic systems has persisted for decades or even centuries without the volcano leading to an eruption. But since volcanic unrest can escalate to an eruption quickly, like in a few weeks, days, or less, U.S. Geological Survey scientists are monitoring the activity closely. A USGS scientist said the odds of Long Valley blowing up are roughly equivalent to the yearly odds of a magnitude 8 earthquake striking along the San Andreas Fault line in California. Long Valley is one of the three supervolcanoes in North America alongside Yellowstone and Valles Caldera of New Mexico. So, that's the situation, and since these articles have been written, we've had ridge crests that are still going on, and uh, in the cause of volcanic field, and an uplift as well, a deformation of that area as well, plus the dead bees on the day of the earthquakes, meaning that the, the gas has got to the little critters, and uh, they give up the little bee souls, and uh, this is still going on, something very strange. It took them two days to tell us that the quakes were in the Coso volcanic field. They did that, and they started updating the Coso volcanic um, um, page with the, the, the earthquakes on time, online. But they have not yet told us that this is on the very, very dangerous Walker Lane fault system. You have it here. You can look it up on uh, Wikipedia if you want. And you can see some of my previous videos on uh, Ridgecrest and the Walker Lane fault system as well. It's very dangerous, leading all the way up to Cascadia, uh, the subduction zone. And they say that once San Andreas activates and uh, the uh, valley, basically California will go down at least three feet if we have a major eight, eight magnitude. Uh, I'm not, you know, fear mongering you here. It's just that they have a scenario as to what will take place with a, a mega quake, which they are expecting in the next 30 years, by the way. And uh, this is according to USGS uh, warnings. And uh, they're estimating that uh, the area would sink three feet. And there could be a, a time where the valley inside gets flooded. And at one point in time in the future, in the long future, hopefully, that will slough off or partition away from the mainland and Walker Lane Fault, 
will become, uh, the Sierra Nevada Range will become the new coastline of the continental United States on the West Coast. So something is very strange that they're not, to me, I, I see that it's very strange that they're not referring to Walker Lane fault system. They're not referring to that. But that doesn't matter. We can research and we can find out what's going on. We can see it right in front of us. So um, USGS study uh, experts at the California Volcano Observatory in Menlo Park report that three-dimensional full waveform tomography reading sound waves bouncing around deep in the earth reveal a reservoir is under the Long Valley caldera and it has more than 240 cubic miles of magma with 27% of it hot enough and the right composite to be liquid, they say. If it all blasted out of the ground, that would make Long Valley, located south of Mono Lake, near the Nevada border, as cataclysmic as the Yellowstone supervolcano's last eruption of 640,000 years ago that formed its 35 by 50 mile caldera. As we know, the caldera is a depression left after an eruption so large the ground surface collapsed over the wide area. So, why are there no screaming headlines in Geographic Ridge documentaries on this? Yellowstone has all those famous steaming pots and geysers, but Long Valley has many hot spots, fumaroles and geysers, geothermal systems that fuels the Casa Diablo power plant even. Both regions have plenty of much smaller volcanic activity from quakes to minor eruptions of magma, gas and rocks. So perhaps Long Valley needs a better publicist, more PR work on it, so that we know what's going on there. Well, uh, I think people should really pay attention to what's happening in Ridgecrest and uh, somehow mingle that and uh, connect that with the fact that we have Ridgecrest taking place in a supervolcano area. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.